Okay, we're now going to talk about robust disturbance rejection. So in robust disturbance rejection, the robust disturbance re uh, uh, rejection problem is find the conditions on the nominal closed loop system such that the controller K robustly stabilizes the plant for every P and the controller K provides disturbance attenuation. So we have robust stability and we have disturbance attenuation. So this is this is an example uh, model, a, an example system uh, in which we might consider disturbance rejection. So where does this kind of thing uh, arise? Where does this kind of problem arise? So suppose we have this, this is our setup. So notice we have a multiplicative uncertainty in this case, and we have a disturbance that enters our system. Our disturbance may have a weighting function, and, and you get this kind of this weighting function um, from the, the process of analyzing your, how your system responds to noise. So for example, if, if we apply a control so that we have zero output on our system, then we can just sit there and measure the noise and get the statistics, analyze the statistics of the noise, and we may find that the noise is colored noise colored noise is so white noise is basically you can think of it as have having a, basically a random it's a random uh, frequency response but it's um but it's mag the magnitude is roughly constant okay it's not exactly constant it's it's like it's like a white noise but it's a, it's like a with a constant amplitude okay so um um so if you have something that where the amplitude varies with respect to frequency, then we can use we can find the envelope of that frequency uh, response and der derive a weighting function for that. So that's where you would get, for example, this weighting function. So then this signal would be treated like a noise that is just constant amplitude. So this is the kind of system we have. We have a disturbance entering our system. And so, so how do we treat this additional disturbance in addition to the stability? Well, one way to do that is like this. So here's our, here's our disturbance that's entering our system. And I'm going to treat this as a, an additional. Uh, so basically, even though I have this error function coming in, I'm going to treat that as if that were coming out of an uncertainty from the system like this. And so I have some uncertainty here. So I'm basically treating that as if it were a feedback uncertainty. So we don't actually know that it is a feedback uncertainty, but this is one way to evaluate the stability of the system, the robust stability of the system. So, so now we have two uncertainties. And so we can treat the disturbance rejection problem like an uncertainty problem. So if you have multiple uncertainties, you basically define uh, disturbance input associated with each uh, perturbation and an output associated with each and we would compute the transfer functions between each of the wi and zi to form the matrix m so m is the mapping from inputs w1 to wm to z1 to zm and that would that would form now the matrix m the uh, overall uncertainty would incorporate all the individual uncertainties, and we can treat them as having a, a diagonal block diagonal structure or diagonal structure. Uh, in, the, in the single input, single, single output case, each of these guys is going to be a scalar. Okay, and so we have that. So in, in the robust disturbance rejection problem, this becomes our overall control system. I mean, our overall system, our M that we get. And here becomes our uncertainty. So we had the two uncertainties, and this be, this, these become our uncertainties. And so we have this kind of a structure. Okay, So we have an M and a delta. We can evaluate this for the uncertainty. And so notice it's, it incorporates both weighting functions, W1 and W2, and we have the closed loop in there. So uh, th there's actually a lot going on there. But... That's a consequence of the fact that we have, in a sense, now two uncertainties. We've actually introduced an additional uncertainty, delta 2, that's not really there, but it 
so it allows us to use the same tool, the tool for uh, robust stability. We, it allows us to use that same tool for the disturbance rejection problem. And so a sufficient condition for robust stability with disturbance rejection is that the largest singular value of m of j omega and sigma max of j omega is less than or equal to gamma, which is strictly less than 1 for all omega. So this obviously requires that m of the h infinity norm of m is less than or equal to 1, since this is less than or equal to 1. Um, but again, this is, this is not a necessary condition since delta is block diagonal. So we've seen the case when delta is when we have an uncertainty that is diagonal or block diagonal, and it involved using the structured singular value. It's like wow, uh, when was the last time you saw that? That was it's been a while since we've seen the structured singular value. So again, this is the this is the basic definition for the structured singular value. So basically here, um, this quantity says I'm going to look for all deltas such that i minus m delta has has um, has determinant that's zero and of all of those deltas that do that I want to find the norm of that and if, for all of those deltas that do that I'm gonna I want to minimize I'm gonna find the minimum norm delta that satisfies this okay one over that quantity then is mu of m now it turns out that if if this quantity I minus m delta has non-zero determinant for all delta in our uncertainty set, then mu is equal to zero. So why, why do we go through all this trouble? And the, re, the answer is that it's the answer. It's not a pretty answer, but it is the answer. And so we have this result. The M delta system is robustly stable for all delta in the uncertainty set if and only if the supremum over all omega of the structured singular value of m at j omega is less than or equal to 1. So notice that the structured singular value, the way we calculate it, is actually not a function specifically of omega. So this is actually here m in the structured singular value definition is a, just a matrix. So really what's happening in all of this is that we are um, we're evaluating m the frequencies omega and then we need to check for the supremum over all omega so this is the overall answer to our robust stability and disturbance rejection problem it involves the structured singular value so look at the practice problems there'll be an, a, a, some practice problems that involve the structured singular value computation and uh, so forth so